I am right outside Escalante, Utah, getting ready to set out on a three to four week hike to Escalante, Utah. That's right, I'm doing a big loop this year. Day two, day four, day six, day eight, day 10, day 12, day 14. We're just getting started. have invaded my tent. I've been buzzing around all morning. As soon as I got out, they got in. Okay, I've been going cross country this morning through the land of this little shrubs and headed down towards Sooner Wash, which will then take me down to 50 Mile Wash. You can start to see the canyons taking shape out there. So I'm gonna go that way, a little diversion, and then over the mountain. Down in Sooner Wash and out of the sun, which is nice. There's a uh, dry fall in the upper part of Sooner Wash and a set of narrows. So you have to bypass quite a long ways along the rim. And I knew that was the case. I just didn't know how long the bypass was, but uh, I'm down in the canyon now and it feels good. In the shade. Looks like the canyon continues to be narrow for, for a ways down. Last night was another miserable night. I've got a hole in my pad and it's just, I can't patch it. So it's basically like I'm sleeping on the ground every night. I contemplated hitchhiking into Escalante to get a new pad and come back, but uh, that was just so much work. It's a disappointment. The, uh, the new pads, at least the static V2, comes with this uh, repair tape instead of the traditional glue and piece of fabric to patch. And that stuff is just worthless, you know? It's so funny. I've seen so many hikers rave about it, so I've added it to my kit, a whole additional roll of it. Then I saw the sleeping pad came with it too, and I thought, wow, this must be really good stuff. Everything I've used it on has failed. It's, it doesn't work for the sleeping mat. It's just, it's not sticky enough. It doesn't adhere. It, uh, I tried on the water bottle. That was pointless. Uh, oh, I have a hole in my backpack already, and try to patch that, and it came off within a day. So yeah, the, the repair tape, uh, I forget the specific name, but... I don't see the purpose. Duct tape is better for me. And uh, unfortunately, I brought less duct tape this time. I tried that on my pad. That didn't work. I've tried so many different techniques. I've tried patching it flat. I've tried patching it inflated. I've tried to patch it with a big piece, with little pieces all layered over one another. Nothing seems to work. But uh, I don't know. It's really impairing my enjoyment of this trip because I'm getting no sleep at night. And then I'm just drained during the day. So... I don't know. I'm running out of tape and I don't have any other fixes, so I don't know what we're going to do except just have miserable nights. All right, that's the thought for now. Ah, look at this guy. I think this is Datura. Nice bloom. There's several of them here. I was just standing by this tree and scared three owls out of it. They're right up ahead now, landed on the rock. Two of them. The other one went the other way, but there goes one. The other one's up higher. He's right there. So cool. I just keep scaring him farther and farther down the canyon. I think they're young ones. I can hear him making a call. So beautiful. I've gotten close a few times. I don't know if you can hear that shrill. Hello, Mr. Owl. I think he's getting mad at me. 
It's all right. I mean you are no harm. Poor guy. I know I'm scaring him. Mr. Al, I need to come through here. Okay, this guy's really going crazy. He is standing his ground. Right in the wash that I need to go down. Come on, Mr. Al. It's okay, buddy. Fly away. Go that way. Well, I guess this is the showdown. Hey, buddy. Come on. Come on, bud. Fly away. Okay, I finally... I finally went up and around him. Okay, goodbye, Mr. Al. You can have your area. We are continuing down the canyon. Wow, that was something, wasn't it? I said this might be the year of the owl, and it sure is. So when I originally saw them, I stopped by this tree in the shade just to check the time, and all of a sudden the tree starts rustling above me, and an owl took off. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And, uh, you know, I said my usual bye, Mr. Al. And about five seconds later, two more take off. I am close enough to see the feathers in their wings. <laughs> and then the two that went down canyon, yeah, we just kept playing leapfrog. And I guess that one guy finally had enough and decided to stand his ground. I never knew owls would be aggressive like that. All right, but anyway, we are still going down Sooner Wash. Finally at the end of Sooner Wash, where I'm meeting up with 50 Mile Gulch. Okay, since 50 Mile Creek dead ends at Lake Powell, we are doing a diversion now. We are free of our gear. We're gonna go down Canyon, see some of the sights, and then come back and go out another way. All right, let's go. And one of those sights is 50 Mile Arch. Check that guy up there, high on the ridge line. Right underneath the arch, there's actually a lot of rock art on this wall. Again, showing that arches were special places to the indigenous people. Yeah, lots of big figures. A whole row of bighorn. There must have been more rock ledges here, or they had some type of scaffolding, because there's some rock art way up there. That sand slide can be used as an exit from the canyon. I'm glad I'm not doing it today, I'll tell you that. Okay, canyon's narrowing up. It's getting good, getting exciting. Oh, we may have to get wet here too. good section. It's nicer when the water's clear. At the lance, I can see how deep it is.
Whoa. <laughs> that was a little deeper there than I thought. All right. We're in one heck of an undercut here. spot here. Narrows that are kind of dark. Quicksand, but man, that is wow, that is nasty stuff. Ooh, okay, hey, let's look at these narrows. Wow, mental note to avoid that spot on the way back. little spot. Well, check out this undercut coming up. Like we just plunge into darkness. That's cool. Let's go check it out. Yep, quite the place. We're deep back under this undercut. Holy mama. place. Kind of a weird feeling walking to the lake. Feels like I'm reaching the end of the world or something. I have mixed feelings about it. All right, let's keep going. The lake was at a record low earlier this year since being filled. I'm in a part of the canyon now that hasn't been free of water for that long. That's why that's so devoid of life. 
unfortunately with the record snowpack, the lake has been rising one foot a day. That's been going on for the last month or so. So I'm actually not gonna get to go down as far as I'd hoped. Amazing feature, Gregory Natural Bridge actually became visible again because of the low water. It's probably not visible anymore though. Either way, it's part of the lake, so I would not have been able to get to it. I would have been close though. Another sign there was once a lake here, lots and lots of trash. This is the third piece of litter I've seen. Probably from the days when people could float in here. Massive silt deposits affect the lake as well. That white is the bathtub ring. Shows you how far we'd be underwater right now if Lake Powell was at full pool. As I walk down here, I keep thinking how special it is at this moment, this moment in time, that I can see this much of this canyon. And I have to remind myself that, that this is what's natural. <laughs> you know, the lake being here is what's not natural. So that's a shame. You know, I've never been a drain the lake type person. I always thought that was a little crazy. You know, there's a lot of benefits of Lake Powell, but uh, I see the point. I mean, we have to recognize all that was lost. And if it comes a time that it's Lake Mead or Lake Powell, yeah, I'd say save Lake Mead and restore Glen Canyon. Thoughts for now. We have reached Lake Powell into the road. 50 Mile Creek, Lake Powell. Actually, I was hoping to go a little bit farther, but the runoff has just been crazy. As I said, the lake has been going up about a foot a day. So if I would have been here like a month ago, yeah, I would have been able to go a lot farther down the canyon. Uh, what a crazy place, huh? It's crazy. I gave myself a four o'clock turnaround cutoff. Look at the time. <laughs> right on the dot. In fact, I can get on that bank over there and we can go a little bit farther. Let's do that. Transition zone is never pretty. Oh boy. Past the transition zone and it's Pure lake over here. There's Lake Powell. Bum bum bum. It is time for us to get back up canyon we have a long ways to go to get back to our stuff and camp or go a little bit farther all right the way the lake is rising right now all of this will be underwater pretty soon within the next month i'd say i have just spent 45 minutes looking for my bandana Went back down the canyon twice. I can't believe I just wasted that much time. I dropped it when I stopped to take a picture and then got frazzled, couldn't find it, didn't see it around me. It fell in the water, thus changed its color. So I walked back to where I thought it might be. It wasn't there, came back, couldn't find it. Went all the way back to Lake Powell and all the way back. I was so dejected, I gave up, started to walk away. There it is. All right, let's get up this canyon. Just so impossible to judge size here. These undercuts are enormous. Great spot for a snack break. We are back to the Narrows. Okay, a reminder to myself not to fall in the quicksand.
These old growth cottonwood trees means we are above Lake Powell's high water mark, which is cool. Okay, 50 Mile Canyon. It was a pretty good day. That was fun. It's funny, there were some amazing parts of that canyon, but I don't think I'll recommend it to many people. And that's just because the hike was tedious. There were a lot of boulders to walk over and a lot of sand and a lot of brush. So I know a lot of people would not like doing all that, even though the canyon's amazing. Oh, it's the uh, pleasure versus pain principle again. Okay, we are almost back to where we're gonna camp. Signing out, day 18.